Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about kitchen appliances. Now, I don't know how many of you spend time in the kitchen. I spend a lot of time in the kitchen. I firmly believe that anyone who likes to eat like me should know how to make food. So, I am quite familiar with how to make a variety of different things and in order to make things in the kitchen, you use a number of appliances. So, appliances first of all are not utensils. Utensils are things like forks and spoons and knives but appliances are the machines that you use. They're usually things that you plug in and then they help you prepare the food or cook the food. So, once again, welcome to this English lesson about kitchen appliances. A blender. So, a blender is something that you use to blend different ingredients together. Notice the name blender also relates to the verb to blend. So, for us, we primarily use our blender to make something called a smoothie. We'll put frozen bananas, frozen peaches, frozen spinach, uh frozen strawberries uh and a little bit of water in the blender and then we will make a smoothie out of it. So, a smoothie is when you take frozen fruit and you blend it together to make kind of like a nice cold drink. That's also a little bit healthy for you. Although some people think that smoothies aren't as healthy as they should be because you're not chewing the fruit but uh, we definitely use our blender quite often. We buy peaches in the summer and slice them and freeze them uh and then we also have usually bananas and strawberries and spinach. The spinach is the green part to make the smoothie a bit healthier. So, a blender used to make blended drinks. There's also something called a juicer. We do not have a juicer. A juicer is something you use where you put fruits and vegetables in and all of the juice from the fruit and vegetables comes out one side so that you can drink it and then all of the rest of the fruit or vegetable comes out the other side so you can I guess compost it. I don't actually use a juicer because if I'm going to have fruit, I want all of the fruit. I want to eat the fruit so that I get not just the juice but the rest of the fruit as well because I think that is very very healthy. But a juicer is a machine that's used to get the juice out of uh, fruit and vegetables. Coffee maker. This is something I used to use a lot more but I don't drink coffee anymore. Uh coffee is this wonderful hot beverage that people drink sometimes in the morning. Uh because it wakes them up. It gives them energy because coffee has caffeine in it. A coffee maker is something where you put water into the coffee maker. You put a coffee filter in and you put your coffee grounds in and then you push a button and the water heats up, goes through the coffee grounds and makes you a nice cup of coffee. So, anyways, a coffee maker. Uh something that some people can't live without. We have two coffee makers and both of them are in our cupboard and we only take them out when someone visits and wants a cup of coffee. So, we don't use them very often. A kitchen timer. So, our kitchen timer is actually digital but this is a very traditional kitchen timer. You turn the timer. Let's say you have decided to bake bread and it says put the bread in the oven for 35 minutes. You would turn the timer to 35 minutes you would set the timer and then 35 minutes later, the timer would go off. The timer would go ding and you know it's time to take the bread out of the oven. Very, very handy. Uh kitchen timers are very handy. If you follow the recipe closely, it will tell you how long you need to cook or bake something and you can use the kitchen timer to do that. So, you set the timer and when the time is up, the timer will go off. It will go bing and then you know it's time to stop cooking what you're cooking. A kettle. So, this is something we do actually use a lot. In fact, I think this is the exact kettle we have in our kitchen. I like it because it's clear. A kettle is something that you use to boil water. If you like to drink tea or if you like to drink hot chocolate, you will have a kettle in your kitchen and you will put water in the kettle and you will turn the kettle on Some people say put the kettle on. We usually say turn the kettle on Um, and then after a while, the water will boil. It will start to bubble violently 
and you know that the water has gotten hot enough that you can make tea and you can make coffee. So, a kettle is a very very common thing to find in kitchens especially in countries where people like to drink tea. Probably that is what it's used for the most often. A bread machine. So, this is handy. We have a bread machine in our house. A bread machine will make bread from start to finish. So, you put all of your ingredients into the bread machine and then on the front, you indicate what kind of bread you want it to make and then it mixes the ingredients. It kneads the dough. It lets the dough rise a couple of times and then it bakes the bread all inside of one machine. We love our bread machine. We don't always use it just to make bread um but I do know that we've used it probably the most often to make pizza dough. That is the uh, most common use. So, instead of letting it finish, we put all the ingredients in uh to make pizza dough. When the pizza dough is done, we take it out. Sometimes, we put it in the fridge for a few hours and then we will roll it out and we will make a pizza with it. But a bread machine, a very cool machine that you can use to make bread. A toaster. This is very common. This is an appliance that most people leave on their counter all the time. We don't put our toaster away because we use our toaster so much that would just be silly. A toaster is something where you can put bread in a toaster or bagels. I think these are bagels. Bagels are like a round form of bread. Um and then it will make it hot and crispy and it will turn brown a little bit. It's really nice when you toast bread and then when it comes out as toast and you put butter on it, the butter will melt and it just makes for a yummy crispier form of bread. We also use the toaster quite a bit if our bread is a little bit stale. You know, bread tastes really good when it's fresh but after a day or two, it might be a little bit stale but it will still taste really good if you toast it. So, a toaster. You put the toaster down, the toaster will eventually pop up and the bread will be hopefully just right. A microwave. So, I did mention this one. A microwave is a way to reheat food or cook food really, really quickly. A microwave uses microwaves. It actually shoots microwaves at the food and this causes the I think the moisture in the food to get hot and that by um its very nature heats up the rest of the food. We use our microwave mostly for reheating food. If I come home late from work and Jen and the kids have already eaten, there's usually a plate of food in the fridge and I will reheat the food in the microwave. Um we also use it to thaw things. If something is frozen and you need it to be thawed quickly, you can thaw it in the microwave. Very, very handy tool or appliance. So, this is a slow cooker and we sometimes call it a crock pot. Uh, this is designed to cook food, usually meat or soups or stews or chili but it's made to cook it really, really slowly. If you're familiar with cooking meat, some of the cheaper cuts of meat aren't very tender but if you cook them in a slow cooker, if you cook them for five or six hours at a lower temperature, it will make the meat a lot more tender and easier to eat. We use our slow cooker often to cook chicken as well because it's just very simple. You put a chicken in the slow cooker, you turn it on and then a few hours later, the chicken is done. It's important to check the temperature though when you cook a chicken. So, a slow cooker generally used to cook food over a long period of time, maybe four hours or six hours or even eight hours and usually used to cook meat. And then there's something called an instant pot. We do not have an instant pot um but generally, this is used to cook a variety of foods very quickly because I think it cooks them under pressure. I think the lid locks on and the instant pot is able to cook using heat as well as pressure. I don't actually know a lot about instant pots although a couple of colleagues of mine have instant pots and they love them um and they keep telling me that I should buy one. A toaster oven. 
So, I'm not sure if you've seen one of these. These are very common. Oop, sorry. These are very common um with college students or university students. A toaster oven is a very very small oven. You can't cook or bake a lot in a toaster oven um but you can reheat things or you can cook some frozen food. So, that's one of the reasons it's popular with university students. It's very small. They might live in an apartment that doesn't have an oven and so, they might buy a small toaster oven. You can use it to make toast but mostly people use it to make frozen pizza or to um heat up like small meat pies. It is a small oven that you can plug into the wall and use it to cook, bake or heat up food. And then there's also something called a waffle iron. Um I met there we go. Something called a waffle maker or waffle iron. It has two names. Um basically what you do is you make a batter and you plug the waffle maker or waffle iron into the wall and it heats up and you pour the batter in and you close the lid for a minute or two and when you open it, there's a beautiful uh lightly brown waffle ready to eat. If you don't know what a waffle is, you make a batter from flour and water and eggs and sugar and a bit of oil. Um it's similar to a pancake batter. So, you can scoop it with a ladle and pour it. Um so, you put some of the waffle batter into the waffle maker, close the lid and then a little while later, you have a yummy waffle and you can put some butter uh, or margarine and syrup on it and it's very very tasty. This is what we call a mixer or hand mixer. So, sometimes when you're making a cake, you put all of the ingredients into a bowl. You put all the dry ingredients in like flour and sugar and cocoa maybe um and salt and then you maybe pour all the liquid ingredients in like water or milk and eggs and oil and then you you will use a mixer or hand mixer to mix all the ingredients together. Um Generally, you don't use a mixer to make things like bread because that dough is very sticky but if you are making a cake or you're making muffins or cupcakes, um you're making more of a batter. When I say batter, it means you can pour, it's something you can pour. It's it's more of a liquid than a solid. So, you would use a mixer or hand mixer to evenly mix all of the ingredients. And this is a stand mixer. This is we would like a stand mixer but we do not have one. So, if you notice this mixer is a hand mixer. You hold it with your hand in order to make what you are making and this is a stand mixer. It has a nice bowl and you put all your ingredients in and you turn it on and it will just on its own mix what you need to have mixed. Very very handy but also a little bit expensive. Maybe someday we'll buy one. We also do not have a scale but some people who are really good bakers or cooks um like to have a scale. So, one way to make something is to measure the ingredients. You could use a measuring cup or a measuring spoon but another way is to weigh the ingredients. Instead of putting in one cup of flour, you might put in six ounces of flour um or you might put in I'm trying to think here like a quarter kilogram of flour. I don't know. I don't use a scale but you might weigh the things that you are putting in. You might weigh the ingredients so that you are more accurate. And then here we have a deep fryer. We talked a little bit about this earlier. A deep fryer is something that has oil in it. The oil is heated up to a certain temperature. Here in Canada, we use Fahrenheit. So, you might heat the oil to 300 or 325 or 350 Fahrenheit and then you will put in a basket the thing you want to deep fry. So, it is a verb as well. I'm going to deep fry some french fries um or maybe chicken strips. These look like chicken strips to me. The nice thing about a deep fryer is that whatever you are deep frying gets really crunchy and golden brown. Um if you deep fry fish or if you deep fry french fries, um they come out very crispy and yummy and tasty. 
but also not exactly the healthiest way to cook food. Um a deep fryer does use oil and you do end up eating a little bit of a um a greasy oily food when you are done um depending on if the oil is hot enough or not as well. A rice cooker. We do not have one of these. My son at university has one of these and we would love to have a rice cooker. A very very handy appliance with one job and its job is to cook rice. So, you put water, you put rice, maybe you put salt in. I don't know. I'm not an expert rice cooker user because I don't have one. Uh and then you set the timer, close the lid and then when it's done, the rice is done and it's uh, all ready to eat. We currently cook rice on the stove in a pan but sometimes we feel like it would be nice to have a rice cooker especially if we have people coming over for dinner. Uh it would be nice to have a rice cooker to um because sometimes you don't have enough room on the stove to cook everything. So, it would be nice to do a chicken in the crock pot and do rice in a rice cooker. That would be very very handy. This is a steamer. Uh we have a steamer. We do not use it very often. Um there are a number of ways to cook something like vegetables. For instance, if you like broccoli or carrots or asparagus, um you can cook those by boiling them but you can also steam them. So, instead of putting the vegetables in water, you allow the steam from boiling water to cook the vegetables for you. I really really like steamed broccoli. It's one of my favorite ways to eat broccoli. Just have it lightly steamed. It turns nice and dark green when you steam the broccoli but uh, just another way to cook food. Usually vegetables although you can steam fish and other things as well. In fact, I think there might be fish in the bottom tray of this steamer right now. Our steamer doesn't have multiple levels. It just has one level. So, uh, and usually we use it broccoli we use it for mostly um a refrigerator. So, a refrigerator is a large appliance used for two things. Usually in a standard refrigerator the bottom is for cold things usually around three or four degrees Celsius and the top is for frozen things usually kept below zero or definitely kept below zero. So, our fridge looks a lot like this. Um in the bottom we keep milk and eggs and um margarine and vegetables and the things that you want to keep cold but not frozen. In the top we keep things like leftovers. By the way, leftovers we often put in our freezer so that you can grab them a couple of days later for lunch. If you don't know what leftovers are, you eat a meal and there's food left over. You didn't eat all the food. So, usually like the other day we had potatoes and chicken and applesauce and green beans but we had leftovers. So, we make little meals with the leftovers and put them in the freezer and then I can grab one when I go to work. Again, refrigerator short form is fridge. We usually just use the word fridge. Um very very handy. Uh probably one of the coolest modern appliances that I can think of. I really like the fridge. It helps you save money because food doesn't go bad as quickly. A dishwasher. We do not have a dishwasher. I've mentioned this a few times. When our kids all move out, we might get one again but then there will be so few dishes to do. Jen and I will probably just do them by hand. Anyways, a dishwasher is a large appliance as well. Remember, I talked about large and small appliances. Um if you miss that, large appliances are things like the fridge, the stove, the oven, the dishwasher. Um and small appliances would be things like a hand mixer, a toaster. Um a dishwasher is something that will wash your dishes for you. You put your dishes in, you put some dishwashing soap in, uh you set whatever cycle you want it to do and you hit start and then it washes the dishes for you. We do have a dishwasher in our staff room at work. That is very handy because there's 25 of us um making dirty dishes throughout the day, mugs and a few plates at lunch. So, it is nice to have a dishwasher instead of someone doing the dishes by hand at the end of the day. Uh this is a stove and this is an oven. It's important though to recognize the difference. You cook something on a stove. Generally, you put something um 
let's see, like if you wanted to cook potatoes, you would peel the potatoes, put them in a pan of water and you would cook them on the stove. If you want to fry an egg, you would fry an egg on a stove. If you're making bread though, you would bake the bread in an oven. So, notice you cook things on a stove, you cook things in an oven. Now, generally, people sometimes get confused because if a stove and an oven are part of the same appliance, you know how you can have the top is your stove top and then the bottom part is your oven. Sometimes people will just call that a stove. But to make it more, the most correct way is this is a stove. If you want, you can call it a stove top. That helps you to remember. And this is an oven. Something that you cook or bake things in. An immersion blender. So, this is a blender that you can stick into things. Usually, people use this to make like cream soups. So, if you're making like um a butternut squash soup or a potato carrot like cream of potato and carrot soup, you would probably use the immersion blender to mix everything together inside of that soup. This person looks like they're making a smoothie using an immersion blender. Uh, there's also something called a food processor. A food processor is a machine that has sharp blades in it that spin and you use it to make different types of food. If you were going to make salsa or guacamole, you might make it in a food processor. You would put the avocado, if you're making guacamole, you would put the avocado and some lemon juice and some salt um and maybe some other herbs and spices and then you would use it to chop up the food. We don't have a food plot processor. I wish we did. It would be handy for doing things like um if you're making carrot muffins or something where you need to chop up a vegetable really finely, um a food processor would be a great thing to have. And then there's the air fryer which I think we've mentioned a few times during this lesson. You can use a deep fryer to fry things in oil or you can buy an air fryer which kind of does the same job but just uses air. And the benefit is that the food is somewhat healthier when you are done. If you make french fries in a deep fryer, they absorb some of the oil that they are being cooked in or fried in and so you end up eating some of that oil which might make you gain weight. Whereas with an air fryer, there will be less oil. Now, the problem is french fries made in a deep fryer are extremely yummy. So, we do like eating greasy oily food um and food made in an air fryer is also yummy but it doesn't have the same um yummy taste. So, an air fryer is used to cook things like french fries or You can cook meat and other things in there as well and it uses air uh, and heat to cook the food.